Happy Sabbath and welcome for the divine service. We praise God for His goodness and mercy and love. The Lord has been good to us. This series has been a blessing to very many people. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, on this Sabbath we welcome your sweet presence. We desire that we would be filled with the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you for the series, The Riser by Pastor Buddha. We just praise you and thank you for his dedication to your cause and the ministry. We pray that you will open our hearts as we are ready to listen to your word. And we pray that our lives will be transformed so that we could reflect Jesus. This we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Day by day, ever in thine own sweet way, teach me to be pure and true. Show me what I ought to do. When in danger, make me brave, make me know that thou canst save. Keep me safe by thy dear side, let me in thy love abide. When I'm tempted to do wrong, make me steadfast, wise and strong. And when all alone I stand, shield me with thy mighty hand. Do the good I know, be thy loving child below, then at last go home to thee, evermore thy child to be. Once again, beloved viewers, it's a wonderful opportunity that God has given us. It's a new bright day and this is the day of the Lord. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Now, we know, as we have mentioned earlier, that we are living in the last days. Christ is about to come again in the clouds of heaven. And when Christ comes back again, will he find us ready? Severally in scripture, the church has been likened to the bride of Christ. Actually, when you read the book of Revelation chapter 19, verse number, verse number 9, the Bible says, And he said unto me, Write, Blessed is he that is invited into the marriage supper of the Lamb. Why? Because her bride has made herself ready. We as a people really ought to make ourselves ready that when Christ comes back again, he will find us ready that we will go and dwell with him eternally because he tells us let not your heart be troubled ye believe in god believe also in me in my father's home are many mansions if it were not so i would have told you i go to prepare a place for you and after i have prepared the place for you john chapter 14 i think verse number three after i have prepared a place for you i will come again and receive you to myself so that where i am there ye may be also so that is the assurance that we've been given by the lord and so before we start uh, our, our our discourse this morning i'd just like us to bow our heads for a word of prayer remember our topic this morning is entitled the bridegroom cometh let us pray lord god in heaven thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity that you've given us to find encouragement and exhortation uh, and challenge ourselves through the study of the word of the Lord. The Bible tells us, this is the lamp unto our feet and the light unto our path. It directs us on the way to go. Lord, as we start this day, we pray that you may direct us on the way that we should go and that we should walk 
therein in your precepts. We pray this, believing and trusting in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Now, beloved friends, we are told in olden times in the Jewish tradition, it was the responsibility of the bridegroom to go and await for his bride, uh, to go and pick his bride at the bride's home. Then he will take his bride and take him to her, to her new home where, which he had set for him. Now, the waiting bride always had, uh, always ha had maids who are considered to be virgins who are preparing her for her great day. And most of the time, the bridegroom came at night. And so the setting of our today's presentation is basically, uh, is basically speaking so clearly uh, to the Jewish minds and audience that were listening. And today it also speaks to us. Now, the Bible tells us in the book of Matthew chapter 24 that the kingdom of heaven shall be likened unto ten virgins which went forth to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise, five of them were foolish. Now, notice that the Bible author Matthew speaks to us in the context of the custom and culture of the people. Actually, when you read, when you read regarding the marriage of Ruth and Boaz, you remember, in, 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 the, in the book of Ruth chapter 4, verse number 2, we are told that there were, ten, there were at least ten, vir uh, 10 virgins who were present when Boaz had gone to meet Ruth. Now, the Bible uses that setting to explain to us this story. And this story speaks to us about you and I. These are not, it's not just a story. It's about you and about your life. Are you ready to meet the bridegroom when he comes again? So the Bible says, The kingdom of heaven shall be likened unto ten virgins which went forth to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five of them were wise. Now, the wise ones took, uh, the foolish ones took no oil, in the, with the, uh, no oil in their lambs when they went to meet the bridegroom. And the wise ones took oil in their vessels with their lambs. Now, it is important for you and I to remember that as the Bible talks about the oil, it talks about the oil of the Holy Spirit. We always need to have the Spirit. And God promised us just before he comes again. The book of Joel tells us in Joel chapter 2 from verse number 28, And it shall come to pass in the last days, I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And upon my servants and handmaidens will I pour in those days of my Spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I shall shew signs in the heavens above and upon the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the lord and the bible says and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the lord shall be saved so christ promises us in this passage that indeed in the last days just before he comes back again there will be a rebaptism of the Holy Spirit. There will be an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in great measure to help us prepare us for the coming of the Lord. And so it also happened in the, in the day of Pentecost when the apostles waited for the coming of the Lord. You remember uh, Peter, Peter was standing with the rest of the apostles and people were wondering, how is it that we can hear these people speaking to us in our own languages, the things about God? That is what the Holy Spirit is able to do to the believers who receive. The Holy Spirit is able to gift the believers with abilities and talents and potentials that they may be able to proclaim the word of the Lord and to live by the principles of the word of God. That is why Zechariah says, it is not by our might, it is not by our strength, but it is by the Spirit of God. So beloved saints, it is important for us to recognize and appreciate the setting of this parable. The kingdom of heaven will be likened unto ten virgins, which went forth to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise, and five of them were foolish. Now, the wise ones took oil, uh, took oil with their vessel, with, the, with their lambs, and the foolish ones took no oil with, with took no uh, the foolish ones took no oil with their lambs, and the wise ones took oil in their vessels with their lambs. Now, the Bible says. When the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. Imagine, saints. Everyone, the wise and the foolish, everyone slumbers and sleeps. 
just when it seems that the Lord has delayed his coming. Even today when you look at the church around us, you realize that it looks like people are sleeping. It looks like people don't know that the Messiah is almost coming. It looks like uh, people have forgotten their, their responsibility to proclaim the gospel to all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching nations to observe everything that God has given us. And the assurance that he has told us, he will be with us up to the end of time. There is so much laxity in our churches today. There is so much uh, uh, disinterest with the things of God. People don't have the passion. A friend of mine came a, a few weeks ago to teach us about uh, evangelism. And what he said regarding evangelism when you were doing a seminar in my local church regarding evangelism. What he said about evangelism was this. In the olden days, in the apostolic era, and even in the Old Testament times, if the Spirit of God would have been absent, the work of the apostles would have been paralyzed. Imagine, if the Spirit of God would not have been present with Peter, if the Spirit of God would not have been present with John, even the visions of Patmos we would have not received. And then he says, but unfortunately, if the Spirit of God lacks in our church today, it will pass by unnoticed and it will be business as usual. Because we are comfortable living even without the Spirit of God present in our midst. Actually, if you read the book of Acts, every time the apostles came to a group of believers, they always asked them, Have you been baptized? Yes. Have you received the baptism of the Spirit? So the Spirit of God is important for us to receive. And that is why this parable is important. Five foolish virgins took their lamps and took no oil with them. And the bridegroom will tarry and everyone will slumber and sleep. Oh, my brothers, awake from your sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed. The Bible tells us, I think in verse number 6 of Matthew 25, And at midnight the cry went out, The bridegroom is coming! Go out and meet him! And then they arose and trimmed their lambs, or they made their lambs ready. Now I know that trimming of lambs is not uh, a common language to this present generation because we have grown up with electricity all over. Uh, there is a meme that goes around saying that, you know, this present generation does not know what we went through in our times. Because in our times there was no electricity. You didn't just have to switch uh, the light and electricity comes, voila. But we had lambs which had, which had a wick. And, and you had to clean the glass of the lamp and then set it up and then light up that wick. And so they trimmed the lamps and, uh, and got it lighted. And so they went to meet the, bride, the bridegroom and usher him into the home of the bride. Then as they trimmed the lamps, the foolish ones said to their wise ones, Give us of your oil because our lamps have gone out. Imagine, Christ is coming. In the clouds of heaven, the signs have shown, the sun, the moon, and the stars have shown, the elements of nature have reeled and shown that indeed Christ is coming. And then you find yourself not ready. And then that is the moment you go to knock at pastor's house, Pastor, please pray for me. It will be late. Today is the day of your salvation. Make your calling and election sure. A time is coming. When you will desire and you will yearn for the word of God. But it will be forever too late. This is the day of your salvation brothers and sisters. A time is coming when you will not be able to receive the words of blessing that we receive today. A time is coming when you will not be able to receive the blessing of prayers from mommy and daddy that are praying for us today. Oh my beloved saints, I want to urge you indeed. The bridegroom is coming. The cry has gone out. Let's go out to meet him. And you know, at that moment is when the foolish ones rec recognize and realize that they have no fruit worthy of repentance. And so they cry out and they say, please give us some of your oil. And you know, the oil produces an experience. The experience of love. 
the experience of kindness, the experience of meekness, the experience of long suffering, the fruits of the Spirit are produced when the Spirit of God dwells in us. But these are things that you cannot just take and replicate it in the life of anyone. You would want indeed that they may be saved, but they have not developed an experience ready to meet Christ when he comes in the clouds of heaven. So that even at that time, when they call all the best choirs, please sing for us the songs of Zion. It is too late. Those songs cannot convert. The day of your salvation you ignored. And so I urge you, my brothers and sisters, please know and appreciate that this is the day of your salvation. When you hear his voice, Harden not your heart. And the wise ones said to the foolish friends of theirs, we, don't, we, we cannot give you enough because our lambs will also go out. Go out there to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And the Bible says, unfortunately, when they went, the bridegroom came and they that were ready went into the marriage feast with them. And the door was shut. My brothers and sisters, I ask you, are you ready to meet the bridegroom when he comes in the clouds of heaven? The Bible tells us indeed the natural signs around us will remind us that the bridegroom is about to come again. Many things are, will happen around us which will remind us that indeed Jesus Christ is coming again. Are you ready to meet him when he comes in the clouds of heaven? The Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 24, verse number 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. All oh, these signs have already been fulfilled before our eyes. We are told in history, when you look back at history, we are told that these signs were fulfilled indeed in a generation that lived about the 18th century. The Bible, uh, uh, we are told in the, in the year 1755, November 13th, there was a great earthquake that shook. No, actually, it was November 1st, not November 13th, November 1st, 1755. There was a great earthquake that shook the city of Lisbon. This earthquake was so devastating that almost 50,000 people lost their lives. Why? Because Christ was reminding us through the elements of nature that he is coming again. And indeed, there was a young man who lived during that, uh, who, who read that story around the 19th century, uh, about 18, 18, 1833, 1834, 1835. That young man was called William Miller. When he read about this great earthquake, it moved his heart. Actually, I was just going through uh, some records and seeing what transpired during that great earthquake. We are told that during that time, many people lost their lives. The, the king of, 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 uh, of, the king of, of, of Portugal, was called King Joseph I. On that day, it was a Saturday, and King Joseph was preparing himself because according to the calendar, it was a Holy Saints Day. So he was preparing himself to go and offer prayers in church because he was, he was a staunch Catholic and he was going to the, uh, to, 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 the, to the church to offer prayers. But his daughter, his young daughter prevailed upon him. Daddy, let's go out for a picnic. And daddy said, no, 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 I need to go to church and offer my prayers. It was around 10 o'clock. But daughter prevailed upon daddy and daddy decided to go with his daughter for the picnic. Immediately they left the city of Lisbon. A great earthquake shook with its epicenter in the sea and the earthquake devastated the city of Lisbon. Many people lost their lives. And the resultant of that earthquake, the, uh, the, 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 the electric cables that were passing across the city of Lisbon, all ignited great fires and people ran and saw uh, and so the sea had receded and they ran and to find sanctuary in the in, in the dry seabed because the sea had receded not knowing that a great tsunami was going to break after the earthquake when the tsunami broke many lives were lost actually historians say Bodies littered across the city of Lisbon that it took one week to clear the bodies from the city. And because of the multitude of people who had lost their lives, there was no way that all these bodies could be buried. And so they decided to burn the, 
and to burn their bodies and to cremate them by fire. Now, around May 19, 1780, at around, at, at around uh, noon again, something very special happened. It was on a Friday. The sun became dark. And people were experiencing darkness wherever they were. I was reading the experience again from the people who lived during that time. There was a great guy who has even found a place in history. He was called Washington Davenport. Davenport was a senator at the Connecticut Parliament. And as he was standing to make his presentations, and he was, he was, he was making his presentations, people started calling points of order, let's adjourn the Senate, it's getting dark, the Lord might be coming. Davenport said, maybe the Lord is coming, maybe he is not coming. If he is coming, well and good, I am not ashamed that my Lord may come and find me deliberating the matters of state. Oh my brothers, are you ready to meet Christ when he comes back again? We are told that actually something else again happened in the year, in the year 1833. The date was November. The date was November uh, 13th. Yes, November 12th and 13th. There was a great meteoric shower. I think it was on a Tuesday and a Wednesday. There was a great meteoric shower that took place, and these awakened people to be to know that indeed God was coming again in the clouds of heaven. Because the Bible says, verse number 30, immediately after those days. The sun will be darkened and the moon will not give a light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Verse number 30. Then shall they see the sign of the Son of Man in the clouds of heaven and all the people will wail when they shall see the Son of God descending from heaven with power and great glory. Christ is coming and is going to come with power and great glory. Then shall he send his angels to the four corners of the, of the four winds of heaven to gather his elect from the four corners, from the ends of the earth, to gather the groom, the, the brides that have found themselves ready by receiving the infilling of the Holy Spirit and their lives being transformed through this amazing power of the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, the bridegroom is at the door. And he has, sent us to, to, he has sent us to proclaim aloud, He is coming. Make yourself ready to meet him. As you start this day, I just want to urge you that we surrender our lives to him because his coming is near even at the door. As we pray this morning, I want to urge you that you give your lives ready to meet him when he come again in the clouds of heaven. Now, Remember also, because we have been given the ministry of intercession, remember when you're praying, pray for your brothers, pray for your sisters, pray for the nation, pray for those who are ex experiencing challenges in the land of Ukraine. Pray that when the bridegroom comes, he may find us ready, our oils filled with the, with the, with the Spirit of God. With Jesus by death reckon mine Living with Jesus a new life divine Looking to Jesus still glory that shine Moment by moment, O oh Lord, I am Thine Moment by moment I'm kept in His love Moment by moment I've life from above Looking to Jesus still glory that shine Moment by moment, O oh Lord, I am Thine Never a trial that he is not there, never a burden that he doth not bear, never a sorrow that he doth not share. Moment by moment I'm under his care. 
Moment by moment I'm kept in His love Moment by moment I fly from above Looking to Jesus till glory doth shine Moment by moment, O Lord, I am Thine Never a heartache and never a groan Never a teardrop and never a moan Never a danger but there on the throne Moment by moment he thinks of his own Moment by moment I'm kept in his love Moment by moment I've life from above Looking to Jesus still glory that shine Moment by moment, O oh Lord, I am Thine Never a weakness that He doth not feel Never a sickness that He cannot heal Moment by moment in war and weal Jesus my Saviour abides with me still Moment by moment I'm kept in His love Moment by moment I've life from above Looking to Jesus still glory to shine Moment by moment, O oh Lord, I am Thine Shall we pray? Lord God in heaven, we want to thank you once again for this wonderful morning that you have given us Lord, you have assured us indeed that you are coming in the clouds of heaven. And Father, you have assured us that before you come, you shall pour out your spirit upon all flesh. Oh dear Lord, we pray that we may receive the baptism of the spirit, that our lives may be transformed, that we may be able to love one another, even in these days when the love of many is growing cold. Oh my Father, I pray that you may be with the, with the listeners who are listening to uh, this, uh, uh, this morning devotion that you will encourage them to remind them that indeed you're coming back again in the clouds of heaven and as the Bible has assured us that we may find ourselves ready to meet you when you come. I pray for their children, even those who are preparing to sit for examinations, give them wisdom and I pray that the wisdom that you give them, even as they excel, men may see their good works and glorify you in heaven. Lord God, we pray as we go out today Please bless the work of our hands and most of all, prepare us that when you come again, we will be able to say with the rest of the saints, this is our God. We have waited for him and he shall save us is my prayer in the name of Jesus we pray.